This must be one of the cutest, smallest little water bottles I've ever seen in my life. I wonder how much water it can actually hold, because it actually doesn't tell me here on this label. In other words, I wonder what volume this container can actually hold. And that's what we're looking at in this segment. We're going to look at volume, all right? What is volume? Well, let's have a look at that first of all. Volume is the amount of space that a substance or object occupies, or that is enclosed within a container. The unit for volume is cubed. And folk, for you guys out there, and you ladies out there, we normally use millimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, or even kilometers cubed. Very rarely do we come across kilometers cubed, but the other three we come across quite often. Okay, so let's have a look at how we calculate volume. Now, we can look at either a rectangular box or we look at a cylinder. And your syllabus requires you to know both of these. So rectangular box, the volume for a rectangular box is quite simple. Length times breadth times height. And folks, you've been doing that since primary school. What's the volume of a box? Length times breadth times height. You know all that. Now, what's the volume of a cylinder? What is a cylinder? A cylinder would be a round container. Okay, something like my water bottle. This is a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder we calculate by saying pi times radius squared times the height of that cylinder. Let's use these formulas in little basic examples. Right. Cedric is building a house. First, he digs the rectangular foundation for the house. The foundation is filled with cement. The dimensions of the foundation are 8 meters by 5 meters by 0, 0,5 meters. Calculate the volume of the foundation. Now, folk, the important thing is here we're dealing with a rectangular foundation. Okay? In other words, my house is going to be rectangular in shape. So my foundation, and we know that when we build a house, we don't just suddenly get bricks and put it on the uh, sand and start building our house. We've actually got to dig a trench, and in that trench we lay some good concrete, so that when we build our house, it's built on a firm foundation. Okay, The first rain, it's not going to suddenly cave in. It's going to stand there firmly. So, Cedric builds himself a house. His foundation is going to be 8 meters by 5 meters and 0, 0,5 meters high. So volume for when we look at a rectangular or rectangle is length times breadth times height, the rectangular prism rather. My length is 8 meters, my breadth is 5 meters, and my height is 0, 0,5 meters. So all we're going to do is calculate all that on my calculator. 8 times 5 times 0 0.5 and I get an answer of 20. So 20 meters cubed. Why cubed? Cubed because we've got to always use cubed when we're calculating volume. All right. Now, my next question says this. If concrete for the foundation cost 180 rand per meter cubed, what is the total cost of the concrete for this foundation? Well, the cost is going to be quite simple, isn't it? Because I'm told I've got to pay 180 rand for every cubic meter. And I've got 20. So I'm just going to say 80 times 20. And we've got 20 already on our calculator, times it by 180, and I get 3,600 rand. Okay, finally, it says, Cedric finds cheaper concrete at a total cost of 320 Rand for 2 meter cubed. Calculate the cost per meter cubed. Well, guys, per meter cubed means I'm going to, if 2 costs 320, what's 1 going to cost? 
it's going to cost 160 rand. Straightforward. All we did was say 320 rand and we divided that by 2 and we got 160 rand per meter cubed. A little bit cheaper than paying 180 rand per meter cubed. Okay, let's have a look here at another example. Alison needs to bake cookies for her son's crash. She finds a recipe for these cookies. She needs to calculate the volume of one cookie so that she knows what size container she can use. Each cookie is shaped like a flat cylinder. She measures a cookie and finds it has these dimensions. And the dimensions are a diameter of 80 meters and a height of 7 meters, millimeters rather. So how did we cal or how do we calculate the volume of a cylinder? We say volume is equal to pi times r squared times the height. And remember, we found that right in the beginning um, of the session where we had these formulas. And you would be given that formula in a metric exam. That's kind of cool because you don't have to really think about it. Now, pi, we will be told, is 3,142. My radius, haha. -ha. The diameter is 80. Radius is always half the diameter, so my radius must be 40. So I'm going to multiply that by 40 millimeters squared. Then I'm going to multiply it by the height, which is 7 millimeters. Okay, so let's go ahead and put all this into our calculator. 3.142, multiply that by 40 squared, multiply that by 7. And I'm going to get an answer here of 35,190, 35, um, four. And what's my answer as? Millimeters cubed, because I'm dealing in volume. All right, let's see what that question did ask us. It asked us to calculate the volume of the biscuit, but it says to the nearest whole number. So the nearest whole number is going to be 35,190 millimeters cubed. Let's just understand this whole concept of volume. If I say I've got a millimeter cubed, it means what I'm doing is I'm taking my ruler, and I've got a ruler here, and what I'm doing is I'm measuring one millimeter, and guys, one millimeter is tiny, 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 you can hardly see it, okay? One millimeter lengthwise, one millimeter breadthwise, and one meter high. So it's the tiniest little block, and in that cookie, Okay, I can put 35,190 of those tiny little blocks will fit into a cookie. That's what volume really is all about. Right, so it's 35,190. So we said 35,190 millimeters cubed. Our next question says this. Calculate the volume of 50 biscuits. Well, if I've got 35,190 millimeters cubed, I'm just going to multiply that by 50 to get the total volume. So out it comes, 35,190, multiply that by 50, and I get an answer of, oh my giddy aunt, look at that, hey, 1,759,000. 1,759,500 millimeters cubed. Not too hard this, eh? Next example. A school builds a swimming pool with the following dimensions. It has a length, it has a depth, and obviously it has a width, right? The other bit of information they give you, which we haven't come across, they've said one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters. They also tell us that a thousand liters is equal to one kiloliter. Now, folk, I want you to focus on what I'm going to tell you now. Okay. The fact that this examiner has given us information 
means we are going to use it. The examiner will not give you information that you do not require in a question. So the fact that he's told us we have a length, we have a depth, and we have a width, we're going to use that. The fact that he's told us that one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters, we're going to use that. The fact that he's told us a thousand liters is equal to one kiloliter means we're going to use that. So what is the question that they're asking us? They're now saying this. Calculate the volume of the swimming pool up to the level it is filled. So volume is equal to length times breadth times height. Okay, now what is my uh, length? My length is 15 and my width is 5. So I've got 15 meters times 5 meters. And how high is the pool water? It says the depth to the filling level is 1,3 meters. So we're going to multiply that by 1,3 meters. Okay. So, let's have a look at this quickly. Oops, where are we? Here we go. Calculator out. 15. Multiply by 5. Multiply by 1.3. And I get an answer of 97,5. So, I've got 97,5 meters cubed. Not hard. Absolutely fine. Now we're taking it a step further. Convert this volume to liters. Now do you remember I told you we were given information and the information was that one meter cubed is a thousand liters. So if one meter cubed is a thousand liters then I'm going to say well actually 97,5 meters cubed we're multiplying that by a thousand and that will give us how many liters we actually need. So 97,5 multiply that now by a thousand and we get 97,500 liters. It also says convert this volume now into kiloliters. Now do you remember we did this? Okay, and we looked at this information, we said a thousand liters is equal to one kiloliter. So in other words, if I give you 97,500 liters and I divide it by a thousand, it will tell me how many kiloliters. We divide it by a thousand and I'm going to land up with 97,5 kiloliters. Sure. There's another question. When the school fills the pool, they use a pump which pumps water at a rate of 2 liters per second. How long will it take to fill up the pool? Give your answer in hours and in minutes. Okay, so let's have a look here. I've got 97,500 liters that need to be put inside my swimming pool. I know that every two liters takes one second. So let's now change this into seeing how many seconds I need. So if I divide it by two, because remember two liters every one second, that should tell me how many seconds I actually got. 97,500, I'm going to divide it by two and I'm going to get 48,750. 48,750 seconds. Okay. Now it says give your answer in hours and minutes. We've got it in seconds. That's kind of problematic. Now guys, I'm going to teach you a shortcut with calculate or changing seconds into hours and minutes. We did it when we did the whole se session on time, but you may have forgotten it. So let's have a look. If I look at my calculator and I look at this button over here, can you see that arrow going around it? That is my time button. Okay. So what I've got to do here is I've got to tell the calculator if I have no hours and I push the time button and I have no minutes and I push the time button.
and I have 48,750 seconds, and I push the time button. So that time button is selling my calculator, right, that's the hours. This time button is telling the calculator, that's the minutes. And the time button is telling the calculator, that's the seconds. If I push equals now, I should get the answer straight away. And there it is, 13 hours. 32 minutes and how many seconds? 30 seconds. Can you see how we've applied our formulas, basic formulas, into more complicated examples? And that's what will be required from you when you do your exam, especially your paper two exam. Finally, in summary then, in the segment we've covered the following. We've explained what volume is and we've calculated volume in various examples. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. Cheers.